Good morning, brothers and sisters of Tweed's Mill Memorial Presbyterian Church. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's Sunday worship for January 24th of the year 2021. I'm going to fake, make a few announcements. The first is, next Sunday, January 31st, will be our first communion of the year. Because of the ongoing COVID crisis, our church services is not meeting in person, and that the church offers um, you know, is not available for public use due to the um, stay-at-home order, we will be celebrating our communion online at home. So please prepare your own juice and bread for the communion so that we can celebrate communion together. And a friendly reminder is if you have any prayer requests or want to share your stories or any difficulties, please don't hesitate to um, contact your minister or your elder or your friendship group leader. And we also have a virtual coffee hour every Tuesday to Friday from at 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. And um, this virtual coffee hour, you can connect by internet or by telephone. The telephone number is 647-374-4685. And you put in the meeting ID code, the ID room, is 563-655-6658 and the password is 1234 May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all Good morning Please join me in our call to worship God alone is our rock and our salvation. We will not be shaken. Trust in God at all times, O people. We will pour out our hearts to God, our refuge. In this time of worship, let us turn our lives to God and accept the good news. We will listen for Christ's call and follow him. Let us sing our opening hymn together. That will be hymn number 39, God of Mercy, God of Grace. Let us pray the opening prayer of adoration and confession together. 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have called us together as your people. You have called us your friends and invited us to follow you. And so your church has grown from scattered homes in ancient times to a worldwide community, embracing men and women, old and young, from many nations and cultures. In our worship today, inspire us to wonder at the miracle of your church. Help us see the privilege we share to be part of your people across the ages and across the continents. It is your love that keeps drawing us to you and to each other. And so we offer our wonder and praise with millions of people who also gather in your name this day. God of all ages, we gather in worship week by week, hoping to encounter your presence. But we confess it's not easy to hear your voice. Sometimes we get distracted by what's happening around us. Sometimes we get confused by conflicting views of what you expect from us. Sometimes we feel challenged and resisted a new word from you. We confess it is hard to turn our lives around when we think we already know where we are going. Lord, have mercy upon us. We ask these things in the name of the risen Lord, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. By thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Assurance of Pardon Friends in Christ, believe in the good news. God's steadfast love endures forever. Trust that God's forgiveness is for you. Be at peace with God, with yourself, and with each other. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of understanding together before we continue to listen to the scriptures. Let us pray. God of new life, Speak to us in the rich, ancient words of Scripture. Send us your Holy Spirit so that we will hear your call. Leave behind our old ways and follow Jesus Christ, your living word. Amen. It is now children's story time. Today's children's story is based on the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 17 to 19. For the Gospel says, And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Jesus calls us to follow him. What do you do when there is an emergency? Let's say, for example, that someone has a serious injury or illness, and if they don't get help right away, they might die. What would you do? 
Right. You pick up the phone or your cell phone and call 911. And when you call 911 and tell the person who answers that you need help right away, it is their job to see that you get help. That person would never say something like, Oh, I'm sorry, we're really busy right now, maybe some other time. Or say, no way, you know, I'm really busy and you know, I have a bad coffee day. Maybe you want to get better coffee in a minute. No, they won't say that, no way. They would drop whatever they're doing and make sure that you get the help you need when you call 911, isn't it? And they'll get the people who are best suited to help to come. In our Bible story today, Jesus was walking along beside the Sea of Galilee, preaching the good news of God when he made a call for help. He saw Peter and Andrew, Andrew throwing the net into the water because they were fishermen. He called out to them, Come, follow me. And I will teach you how to fish for people. You see, Jesus wanted Peter and Andrew to help him teach people about God's love for them. When Jesus called Peter and Andrew, they didn't say, Oh, not right now, we're busy fishing. No, no, no they're biting the lure. We'll just have to wait for a moment, maybe some other time. No way, right? They didn't say that. The Bible tells us they left their nets and followed Jesus. Then Jesus, Peter and Andrew, had gone a little further when they saw James and John sitting in a boat, mending their nets. When Jesus saw them, he called to them, Follow me. They didn't say, Oh, not right now, we're fixing and mending our nets. Perhaps some other time, you know, we want to make sure the fish doesn't come, you know, run away from the net or, or break our net. No. The Bible says that they left their father sitting in a boat with the hired hands and followed Jesus. Jesus is still calling for help today. He has called you and me to help him to bring others into God's kingdom. Is it an emergency, we ask? It sure is. It is a matter of life and death. The Bible says, unless you repent, you will all perish. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus has called us, and what will we say? What will we do? I hope and pray that we will drop whatever we are doing and answer the call. Let us pray together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to be faithful in answering the call to discipleship. We want to fish for people, just like Peter, Andrew, James, and John. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us listen and hear God's words together. Our responsive reading today is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, O people, pour out your heart before Him, God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath, 
those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Our New Testament lesson is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Today's Gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. The beginning of the Galilean ministry. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus calls the first disciples. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. It is now quiet reflection time. Let us quietly listen to the anthem and reflect together.
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Upon looking at today's scripture, did you notice something different? For the last seven weeks of this new Christian year, since Advent, we have went through all the different Gospels in the Bible. We went through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? This week's Mark, and last week, we looked at Luke. We know that in our lives, we have heard that the Christian faith is too confusing. There's too many things, too many different thoughts. No uniformity, etc. But this is the strength of our faith. It gives us the different perspectives of the faithful. In this case, each of the Gospels gives us a different perspective and even on how they have experienced Jesus, to experience God, experience the gospel, in order to give us a complete or a fuller picture. And this reminds me of a joke. One time, three preachers sat discussing the best positions for prayer, while a telephone repairman worked nearby. Kneeling is definitely best, claimed the one. No, 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 no. Another contended. I get the best results standing with my hands outstretched to heaven. That's the best when I pray. And the third one insisted, you're both wrong. The most ex effective prayer position is lying prostrate, face down on the floor. And then the repairman could not contain himself any longer. Hey, fellas, he interrupted. The best praying I have ever did was hanging upside down from the telephone pole. I find this funny because this is true. Because each one of us experienced God differently. And each one of us is part of a puzzle which adds to and completes our Christian faith. John emphasized the spiritual aspect when Jesus called, no, during the time when Jesus called the apostles. Luke seems to view about the mission at hand, the responsibilities and authority that God has given us. In Mark's Gospel, we see how this early decision needs to be reaffirmed and even corrected time and time again. Mark is more practical, expressing the challenges that we face as the faithful children of God every day. At first read, we might find ourselves lacking. We could think that we cannot live up to the apostles, isn't it? Who dropped everything, family, job, life and security. They dropped everything instantly to follow Jesus into an unknown future. And this sets the bar so high, isn't it? We can imagine how hard this is and how hard to do this. Yet this story is uplifting because God will inspire us to have the courage, commitment, and confidence like what Simon, Andrew, James, and John have done. And there is comfort in this because of the reality 
that the apostles have to contend. We know that during Jesus' time, they were under Roman rule. They were oppressed from forces outside their country. And they were even oppressed by forces inside their country. Oppressed by their Roman puppets, rulers, the Herodian dynasty. And this is also the time when Jesus, you know, was baptized, who received God's blessing and confirmed his identity and started his ministry. And of course, lastly, Jesus is also looking for people, people eager to follow him. The Reverend Dr. David Lewis said, Crisis, confidence, and commitment. These are at least three of the ingredients that makes this the right time. And this reminds me that we are like this too, right? We also would meet crisis or meet challenges in life. We also would get the confidence from God and we also would have the commitment. In our Christian faith, we have something called Carol's time, which is basically, it means, the time when God intervened into human affairs, where human time and history is interrupted by the promise, presence, and fulfillment of God. So, in other words, God doing what during God's time. And today's gospel story is the perfect Carol's time, isn't it? God came at the right moment, at the right place, and asked the right question, or stated the question. Then the question is, what would our response be? We, th we see this in the opening proclamation by Jesus, who said, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Meaning, this is the right time and the right place to do God's ministry. And for us Christians, it is still, in this 21st century, it is still the right time and the right place for us to be in God's ministry and to share the love and good news of Jesus Christ. Many times, we might be hesitant or afraid or even feel that we are unworthy of participating in God's ministry, thinking that, many, many reasons, thinking that maybe we might not be worth it, maybe we might not be good enough. However, we have to know and remind ourselves, just like what the gospel already says, we are already the children of God, just like the event, the chronological event, just happened just before Jesus called in the disciples. As God proclaimed in Jesus' baptism, You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. What we do at heart, at, of being a Christian, what we do, things, is at heart of being a Christian and not to do things to become a Christian. What I really mean is, there's a major difference of when we serve in ministry. We have to remember that we are already children of God, and that when we serve, is not to prove or to earn to be God's child, but to show that we are God's children, since we are already accepted. Granted that we might make mistakes along the way, and being a child of God is a lifelong commitment. 
and we do not need to feel guilty or beat ourselves down when we couldn't overcome a particular challenge at a given time. Even the disciples went experienced through this as well. The theologian Elton W. Brown said, At Caesarea Philippi, Simon affirms his faith in Jesus, but not his faith in Jesus as the suffering Messiah. Learning that will take a lifetime. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter knows how good it is to be with Jesus, but forgets that the real task is to follow Jesus. Of course, we also know at the very end, when Jesus is on the cross, Peter, Andrew, James, and John are nowhere to be found. Even then, God does not count that moment as the final word. So you see, I find this comforting because even our growth is in Carol's time. It's according to God's time. And whatever happens, nothing is set in stone. Ahead for them and for us, there is still much to learn, much stumbling, misunderstanding, and maybe backsliding. Becoming a faithful Christian disciple takes both a moment, and, but also a lifetime as well. Today's Gospel shows us that we follow Jesus in particular and distinct ways that may or may not be like the first disciples. I could guarantee we say that we do it in our 21st century way. Maybe we follow by becoming a teacher. Maybe we follow by volunteering as a big brother or big sister guide for children. Maybe we follow by looking out by doing things for the kids at school. Maybe we follow by doing a job we love as best as we can to help others. Maybe we follow by doing a job we hate, but contribute to supporting our family, community, and others. Maybe we follow by volunteering our time. Maybe we follow by listening to those around us and responding with encouragement and care. Maybe we follow dot dot dot. You fill in the blanks. There are many ways that we can follow Jesus here and now. What is important is not being better disciples, quote, quote. Of course, being better disciples, this will result as we earnestly follow God. But what is important rather is, it is about knowing and experiencing Jesus more deeply by following Him. And whereas we follow Him very deeply, as a result, we will become quote, quote, better disciples. We follow Jesus by trying to imitate him, to treat others with the same regard, love, and patience that he did. And this is the spirit of what it means to be a Christian, to try to live and treat others as Jesus did. Embracing the values of inclusiveness, love, forgiveness, and healing that he radiated in word and in deed. Let us all pray together. 
Let us pray the prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray for each other. God of fishers and farmers and factory workers, God of those serving in healthcare, hospitality and at home, God of our offices and businesses, our stores and our streets, our schools and recreation centers, of emergency services and entertainers. We thank you for the many ways we can serve your purposes. You called Jesus' first followers to change their livelihoods, and so they did. Today, we pray for all those whose work has changed without their choice because of COVID-19. For those struggling with little or no work, whose businesses are in jeopardy, who fear for what this year may hold. Assure them of their value to you and to us all. Give them courage and perseverance as the future unfolds. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the churches who bear your Son's name, whatever denomination or perspective or tradition that shapes us, we thank you for the fellowship we share and the gifts of the Spirit we receive. We pray that the differences between us, which seem so important to us, will not blunt our witness to Jesus and the healing and hope he offers. Teach us to value diversity in our discipleship and honor what unites us more than what divides us, so that the world may see Jesus reflected in all our lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our cities and towns, of our villages and reserves, God of all nations and neighborhoods, of all clans and tribes, cultures and families that shape our identities, you created us for community, to find enjoyment and support, collaboration and productivity together. We pray for all those who suffer because others judge their identities, their language or religion, their orientation or ethnicity their social standing or lack of resources. Guide us all to appreciate our common humanity and find ways to learn from each other through our differences. Help us to recognize the face of Christ in those who challenge our assumptions. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of all times and situations, we bear on our hearts concerns for many around us, people we know and situations we care about, where suffering exerts its power and challenges seems overwhelming. Help us in this time as we open our hearts and their needs to you. Bind up the brokenhearted, O God. Bring justice for the vulnerable. Send your spirit of healing and hope to embrace those who need you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you came as a God of comfort fellowship and healing. 
you bless those who weep and protect those who need protection. We pray for our friends, family, and people within our community, such as the people in Shobong residents, the Stevens uh, Sim family, Thomas, Reverend Hansel's friend, Edna's friend Barbara in England, and also for ones whom we have not spoken out loud and for the concerns we bear on our hearts this day. Shine the light of your comfort and healing into their lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We offer all that we are and all that we hope for through Jesus Christ. Together we say, Amen. Let us sing our ending hymn. That will be hymn number 648. I'm gonna live so God can use me. Let us now go and delight in doing God's work, leaving our fingerprints in places where God would want them to be. And now may our Creator direct your ways so that you may always walk upon His world. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. God's blessings surround you each day as you trust Him and walk in His way.